All right, now we're glad to be joined by Janelle Helm. And uh, Janelle is the superintendent for the Carrington Public Schools. And we check in with Janelle once a month to see all what's happening at Carrington and the uh, school and the kids and everything. So thanks, Janelle, for joining us here. We appreciate it. And absolutely uh, busy week uh, in Carrington. We got uh, the big homecoming week going on. So what's all been happening this week? You know, we just had, we had our volleyball game last night. Um, we have a lot of dodgeball going on. Um, I always look forward to the pep rally at the end of the week. Coronation today at three, um, our senior dance, um, just watching them practice and get together for that. It's just so nice. It's something, you know, I look at my own kids went to school at Davies High School in Fargo with like 369 kids. So I love the opportunities that our kids get to celebrate their class and be together. And it's kind of a tight knit group. So it's just, um, it's just a really great group of seniors that we have this year. And, um, I'm definitely going to miss them. So I'm enjoying every minute I can with them while they're here. But. Yeah. And uh, you kind of got a theme every week uh, where the kids kind of dress up, participate in the activity. So that's always fun during homecoming week, right? Yeah. It was dressed like your parent today, parents <laughs> today. And um, I have a lot of um, farmers in the hallway. I have a lot of um, kids that went out, nurses, vets, um, kids that just went all out. Some dressed like how their parents would dress for golf. Okay. Um, you know, or it was, it's just, it's pretty comical. It's yeah. been really great. Tomorrow is um, like America Day. So red, white, and blue. Um, Monday was Jersey Day. So it's just been great. It's been fun all week. So yeah. Okay. Kids look um, forward to it. Yeah. Yep. All right. Sounds good. And of course we got the homecoming football game coming up Friday night right here on YLE. Uh, yes. Park River area coming to town. So that should be a good one. That's it. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Was a tough, you know. Hopefully, we'll um, get back on our winning streak. That was a tough game for us against Harvey. It was a great game. We played so well, so close. That game could have went either way, obviously. So, yeah, yeah excited for our coverage yep. come to town. Yep. <laughs> yeah, should be nice weather too. I'm hoping we won't yeah. have to deal with all the rain. Poor Kyle yeah. Smith last week. With, I mean, we were sludging. They were just sludging through that water. They'd come sliding off the side of the field, and it'd just be like a wave, like you're on a slip and slide. So, but I mean, uh, thankfully nobody got hurt, and yeah, yeah, you know, it was what it was when we lost. But yep. a bummer. Yep. Yes. All righty. Well, um, school board meeting happened, of course, here in September. So you yeah. want to talk a little bit about that too, as as well, right? Yeah, I think our, our biggest um, thing that we had on our agenda was to discuss, you know, if we were going to move forward, um, if we were going to propose back to the community, if we were going to go for our vote again for increasing our building fund levy from five to 10 mils. Um, Joe Lemur, our board president, is just, he is such a great board president. He, um, you know, with his teaching background and his love for education. He always loves to go in and look at the data on insights and, you know, check different things out across the state. Um, and I enjoy that too. Um, one thing we looked at though, is we do have 171 school districts in the state of North Dakota and over 98 of them have more than five mills in their building fund. And I think that was, you know, something that we talked a lot about um, with the board was, you know, we also have measure four coming up and I think, you know, our city tax, our property taxes have went up, right? Um, people are just getting their tax statements and there's been some increases there. So that's not wonderful um, for us. But I also think, um, you know, going forward, it's just something that we need to look at it as we're really voting on the building fund levy of increasing that from five to 10 mils. Um, you know, we, we just need to have that money there for improvements that need to be made for our school. I mean, to me, I know I, I would love to do the project if everything came in um, at bid, but I also believe in a secure entrance. I believe in, you know, we, we need to be able to constantly do upgrades to our school and keep our school, you know, the part of the strength of our community as well. So, you know, I think once we get through, um, Measure four, I think people are worried with property taxes. Um, you know, I never thought they would get enough signatures to even bring that to fruition, but they did. And um, I'm hoping that it gets voted down because it would, you know, I'm sure as you have heard as well, it's going to impact our communities tremendously if that were to pass. I think some people um, may not have, you know, the information that they need to make determine that. I think people sometimes see no property taxes and they think, oh, that'd be a good thing, no property taxes, right? But it would it would 
affect us greatly with our school district um, would be, it would be a huge impact with our school district, our funding, our transportation, um, our salary schedules. Um, it would be the same for our city, you know, um, taking money away from our police, our fire. I mean, all the things that we need in our community. So my gut tells me it's not going to pass, but I'm going to feel better when I know that it did not pass for sure. I, that's one thing with our North Dakota Council of Educational Leadership. We focus on this a lot in our meeting and how we're getting the message out to our own communities of just that this is something that we have to vote no on. Um, there's a huge group behind this measure that is pushing for this to go through um, and campaigning for this. So I'm just hoping that, you know, everybody votes no on measure four um, because it would greatly impact us as a school district and our whole community. And, and that's concerning to me. So. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thanks, Janelle. We appreciate it. And uh, for the information yeah. there and um, anything else uh, you want to talk about uh, while we got you on here this month? You know, just I think we're off to a great start this year. Um, you know, I'm always so proud of our staff and how we, you know, even the first few weeks of school, we get off the ground running. And, um, you know, I've been in all of the classrooms and it's just great to watch our staff in action. I feel so fortunate. Um, we have such great educators here. And, you know, I've been in the classes, classrooms where we have um, new teachers in our building, too. And and just the connections that they've already made with kids. It's great to see. Um, and just having our team back together has been great. Okay, good deal. Well, thanks for the information. We appreciate it. Excuse me. Sure. And uh, we'll have you on again in October talking about the uh, school board and everything else going on. And, you know, uh, can't complain about this, uh, September weather. Yeah, it's been a little wet, but uh, temps has been decent. So. <laughs> yes, we're just hoping for no rain on Friday. Yeah. Um, Last year, yes. last year, um, it worked out. Um, I, I wanted fireworks at the homecoming game and I had talked to, and he probably doesn't even want this out there, but Bruce Buckmeyer. Um, <laughs> and you know, I said, and he said, you know, probably just get to do it one year. And I'm thinking, okay. And then the kids were all like, what about the fireworks this, is, this year, Mrs. Helm? And I'm like, oh, I'll try. And so of course we're going to try to do that again. Um, and you know, we're just, they're excited. I hope to see everyone out at the homecoming game. It's just fun when, you know, it's just the atmosphere is so much fun when our community comes together and is supporting our kids and, um, our students are very excited for the football game. So, yep. And it, we were had a good crowd at the volleyball game last night too. So that was wonderful. So, yeah. Hope okay. to see you there. I know I'll see you there. Greg. Oh well, yeah. Yeah. We'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Janelle. We appreciate uh, you taking time and chatting with us here on the Chatter Program. And uh, have a great rest of your day. Enjoy homecoming week, uh, the rest of it. And then we'll have you on next month again. So, All right. Thank you so much, Greg. Yep, you bet. Have a good day. You too. Connor Weber joins us right now in the Carrington Cardinal Community Chatter Program. And Connor is the high school principal here in Carrington. And we got a principal's report to get to on the Chatter. Thanks, Connor, for joining us here and uh, first time joining us. So, I will try and check in with Connor whenever he's got uh, updates for us. He's got uh, student organization updates, so we're going to talk about that here. And, uh, of course, uh, the big homecoming week, a uh, lot of activities, a lot of kids dressed up this week at uh, at the high school and elementary this week, right? Yeah, it's been a great week. Uh, a lot of participation from the kids. Kids having a lot of fun uh, doing the dress-up days. We've had a jersey day. We've had a dress-like-a-parent day. Um, today is patriotic day. So a lot of red, white, and blue in the hallways. Uh, it's been great for the kids. A lot of fun, a lot of smiles. Uh, it's been really good. Okay, sounds good. So um, let's talk about, so there's a lot of organizations, um, you know, at Carrington High School. And and you want to talk and kind of highlight some of them uh, right now on the Chatter Program, correct? Yeah, I just want to kind of give a little update on all of our student organizations. Um, you know, we have a lot of students that are very active in the school. They're doing a lot of things, uh, not only in the school, but in the community uh, throughout the year. And I just kind of want to give an update on kind of where we're at with a lot of that. So um, I'll start with our FCCLA group. Uh, that's Future Career and Community Leaders of America. Um, our advisor for that is uh, Mrs. Shania Gillis. Uh, what they have going on right now is uh, right now through homecoming week, they've started a rock, paper, scissors tournament that's been going on throughout the school among students with uh um, the beads and they play in the hallways and, and it's been a great competition. They're raising money uh, for their organization organization to pay for the 
state and district competitions that they have coming up. They also have a soup and sandwich meal that's going to be coming up uh, before a football game here in October, where they'll be donating the earnings from that to an organization um, of their choice. They're also working hard on their star events uh, for their state competition that is uh, coming up here uh, later in the year. Um, then we have our FBLA, that's Future Business Leaders of America. Uh, their advisor is Mrs. Josie Skitlin. Um, you know, looking back, our FBLA program has been very successful. They had 30 students attend the National Leadership Conference this last summer, and they actually had their first team place um, in a performance event uh, down in Orlando. Uh, Sierra Freed, Eden Hornet, and Jasmine Yabara uh, finished 10th in the nation um, in graphic design competition. So very impressive there. Um, they're just getting started with this year with their local officer team of Kendall Kovar, Jasmine Yabara, Sierra Freed, Eden Hornet. Josh Bickett, Kennedy Pazernick, Juliet Davis, Neil McKibben, Drew Matt, and they'll be attending the Fall Leadership Conference that's coming up in October for FBLA. Um, they're always active selling candy at the games. Uh, you'll see them around in the community. They do a great job with that, and they do have their soup supper before our high school fall concert on October 10th. Um, then we have our SOS organization, that's Sources of Strength, Mrs. Molly Zutek is our advisor for that. They, they, they're they up to 26 members this year. Uh, it's been great. It's a great support system for our school community. Um, we did have a national trainer come in and train 30 students in the school and, and trusted ad adults in the community. Um, it was a great experience for the kids and getting to have uh, share that time together was a was a really good thing. Um, we also have a, had a group of SOS members uh, participate in that community um, out of the darkness walk that they help set up and, and participate in. And then they have a, a big event with the uh, Red Ribbon Week coming up in October that they work with uh, public health with, uh, on working in the elementary um, and some gratitude journal activities and some other things uh, throughout the year. So that's a, that's my first couple uh, student organizations. I got a couple more here. I know I'm doing a lot of talking, but uh, we'll keep going. National Honor Society, Mrs. Kristen Hewitt is our advisor for that. Um, they've already started off the year. They do a ton of volunteering in the community and in the school. Um, you know, a couple things that they do is they help the custodial uh, staff clean up the gym and the football stands after the games. Uh, they've done some concessions for JV and junior high football games. They helped haul items at Junk Fest. Um, next week, they'll start their Meals on Wheels, which is delivering meals to community members. Um, they'll also be serving food at the Hospital Gala and the Calvary Baptist Tablescapes event. Um, they also have a Halloween food drive, Alzheimer Awareness Fund Foundation uh, fundraiser, and then a Angel Tree, Angel Tree project coming up in December. So a lot of things going on, a lot of um, great community events for National Honor Society. Um, and then the last one that I'm going to talk about for right now is the FFA, uh, which our advisors, Missy Hansen and, and Mitchell Becker, do a great job with our FFA program. A lot of success and a lot of a lot of opportunities for kids there. They've had three state champion teams and two state champion individuals over the summer. The Ag Mechanics team, the Floriculture team, and the Land Judging team. Uh, the Ag Mechanics team and the Floriculture team will compete at the National FFA Convention, convention at the end of October, along with the Livestock Judging team that qualified last March. Uh, the Land Judging team will compete at the National Convention in Oklahoma next May. Uh, with Molly Hansen being the high individual in land judging, and Jacob Heinrichs was the high individual in advanced tractor driving. Uh, they do have 21 members that will be attending a state fall leadership conference in Bismarck on September 28th and 29th. So a lot of great events, a lot of great uh, student organization things happening. Um, a lot of uh, seeing the kids out in the community doing a lot of stuff, whether it be volunteering, helping out. Uh, whatever it is, it's it's great to see our kids doing these things and I'm very proud of them and, and just how committed they are to their organizations. Yeah, it's really it's really nice to hear uh, these organizations and, you know, the kids participating and doing well, winning state championships and the, the numbers. So, you know, it gives the kids something to do and, and something they're passionate about, you know, in these certain organizations. So it's really cool to hear. So, yeah, it, it's great. It really is. And and some of these kids that, you know, especially with the FBLA F, F, and the FFA, you know, these national conventions that they've been going to and competing at and um, doing a great job, you know, FBLA first, first team, you know, ever to place at, in a, in a um, graphic design event, you know, 10th place in the nation is just outstanding. And, and those kids, they're doing a great job. Okay. Sounds good. And then uh, 
Of course, we got the big homecoming football game tomorrow night. It's yeah. at Cardinal Stadium. The Aggies coming to town, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, the football team's off to a 3-1 start. You know, head coach Kyle Smith and the boys have been doing a great job. Uh, they play really hard. Um, it's going to be exciting to watch. You know, homecoming's always an exciting time. A lot of fanfare around the week and with the kids and the, like we talked about the dress up days and, it, and it's really exciting and it kind of all culminates in that homecoming football game so i'm excited to watch them get out on the field um and hopefully come out with a win Re uh, really looking forward to it um you know i did want to touch on a couple other uh, athletics teams if, if i could real quick you know our volleyball yeah. team they're off to a three and three start um they their next game is tonight against new rockford in new rockford and then our next home game is lamore on tuesday um, and then we have our girls golf. We have uh, Molly and Callie Hansen that are out for girls golf this year, um, where Molly's already qualified for the state girls uh, class B golf tournament, which has been great. And then our cross country team where we that features uh, Kennedy Pazernick, who's ranked 10th uh, in the state in cross country, you know, class B girls. So a lot of success on the in the athletic uh, area as well. It's, it's just great to see kids doing all these things and we love supporting yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's uh, good to get the fall sports. Uh, well, first day of fall coming up here, and the fall sports are rolling. And before you know it, will be winter sports. <laughs> no, it's 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 crazy how fast time flies. You know, it seems like seems like when football season hits, it seems like uh, those football Friday nights get here quicker and quicker every week. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it's a great thing. It really is. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Well, thanks so much, Connor. We appreciate it, and uh, we'll try and get you on here. Uh, uh, on the chatter program fill us in i appreciate the updates for the all the the organization that's really good to hear all the participation and all the awards and everything and how they're doing so that's awesome so uh anything else uh you want to talk about at all while we got you on here uh you know i i think that i that that's everything i wanted to cover here i just want to thank the community for all their support you know with our student organizations and with our athletic teams it's it's really great when um, you know, we have a volleyball game here at the school and you hear people come in and say, wow, look at this crowd. And they hear the support from our from our community and, you know, any of the events that we have going on with our student organization. I feel like we're very fortunate with the great support that we get. So I just wanted to thank the community for that, too. OK, good deal. Thanks so much, Connor. And enjoy the rest of your day. And we'll chat again and, have, and uh, enjoy the rest of the week and homecoming week, too. So sounds good. Have a good one. You bet. Yep. Bye. Discover the charm of Carrington, where community and character come together. Our vibrant community is full of welcoming smiles and unique experiences, from delicious dining and one-of-a-kind shops to lively events and beautiful parks. Join us in celebrating the best of Carrington, where every visit feels like coming home. Come visit the Carrington Chamber and CVB office to learn more about our wonderful town and its amazing businesses. Explore Carrington today and experience the warmth of our community. Hey, sports fans, tune in to YourLiveEvent.com for all the action-packed Carrington Cardinal games, streaming live and free. Catch every thrilling moment with our live coverage. Listen to the play-by-play -play and watch the games unfold right on your screen. Plus, if you missed any of the excitement, don't worry. You can catch up on all previous games at YourLiveEvent.com. Check out the full schedule and never miss a moment of your favorite local Carrington games. Stay tuned and let's go Cardinals! Lori Deeds from the Carrington Chamber is joining us once again here on the Carrington Cardinal Community Chatter Program, brought to you by the Carrington CVB and Chamber. And uh, Lori checks in once a week to fill us in on all that's happening at the Central City and all the events and activities going on. So thanks, Lori, again for taking time and chatting with us here. So let's see, we got, uh, well, you know, first day of fall, not too far away, right? Yes. And boy, we've had some beautiful weather, haven't we? And all the green grass in town. <laughs> Just, just can't get in that fall mode yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, but yeah, it's uh, leak. Some leaves are turning too, right? A little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm actually. I mean, I love summer. You know, of course. And I don't. I'm not looking forward to winter. But it's just fall is pretty nice. There's the gradualness of going from these 80 degree days, maybe into some 60s, and and harvest in full swing. A lot of beans coming off and whatnot, and so. Yep. Time to think about pumpkins and uh, uh, what is it that latte uh, so many people like uh, pumpkin. Uh, pumpkin spice. Do you drink latte. that? Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pumpkin spice. Pumpkin spice. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that time of year. <laughs> well, we got a few things to finish out with for September. We've got um, Harvest Fest coming up Saturday, 28th of September at 530 at the Foster County Fairgrounds. And there's going to be dueling pianos, uh, excellent meal, prizes, fun, and more. So people should come out and support Harvest Fest. And um, that'll be happening on the last Saturday in September. Um, also on Saturday, the September 28th, Cows and Coke Creamery Cafe is open from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So if you didn't get a chance to get out there during Junk Fest, here's another opportunity for a drive in the country and uh, always a good time to stop out there. And as a reminder, if you aren't available to stop at the Creamery when the cafe is open and get some um, food that way, you can always visit the Milk House, which is open every day. And it has a lot of really good food in there and a lot of neat things to also purchase. So um, the Milk House right there on the farm, it's got a little sign and you pop in and um, it's they've got cameras in there and stuff for um, keeping track of things. But it's just an honor system. Just pay for what you um, take. So um, that's open um, all the time. And heading into October, we've got a blood drive coming up October 3rd at Calvary Baptist Church. And that goes from 1.30 to 6 p.m. And I think they got some incentives now. I got an email the other day that they're looking for my blood type and <laughs> I can get entered to win a drawing. <laughs> so um, maybe <clears throat> people want to get out and give blood October 3rd. Of course, it's always needed. Um Harrington Health Center Auxiliary is going to have tablescapes in October, and this is a really fun event they have every so many years. It's a luncheon, and that's happening at Calvary Baptist on October 12th at 725 Main Street. You can view the beautiful tables at 11 a.m., and then they'll seat everyone at 1130, and that's $25 per person by reservation only. And the money raised will be used for medical equipment and furnishings at the health center. So always a really fun and um, just a neat, uh, something different type event. And that'll be happening, like I said, on October 12th. On October 13th, it's the Trinity Lutheran Church Fall Supper. So everybody looks forward to that every year. Um, one other thing coming up, too, in October is Pasta Fest. And this is put on... Um, it, with uh, 8th Avenue Foods. Um, I call it Dakota Growers Pasta Company, but they are owned by 8th Avenue Foods. They are a subsidiary of that company. And so they're teaming up with the Independent, Foster County Independent, and then um, 8th Avenue Foods. And they're doing a Pasta Fest event on October 17th. And um, I'm going to be cooking up some food. And I know there's quite a few other places that are, and it's downtown Carrington. And they'll have um, tasting. I think it's a dollar a vote. I haven't got all the details um, locked in my brain yet, but I think it's a dollar a vote. And they're still looking for a few more participants. So um, if you'd like to participate, all the pasta is um, given to you by Dakota Growers or by 8th Avenue Foods. And so um, you can cook up one of your most favorite pasta dishes and you can participate. So that's coming up on October 17th. And then um, also, I want to remind everybody that um, if you have questions on stuff or um, on the economic development side, we have a lot of incentives now. And so we've been getting some calls. And of course, if you'd like to stop by and visit with us, that would be great. 871 Main Street, or you can um, give us a call 652-2524. And um, there's lots of lots of good things happening around town with some of our grants and whatnot. So just want to remind people that... Um, that we're working with them and with the businesses and whatnot down here. And um, we'd sure like to explain more things to you, get the word out. So that would be great. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Laurie, for that update. Uh, we appreciate it. Checking in with us uh, weekly here on the chatter program. And uh, last weekend, um, pretty busy weekend, of course, uh, junk fest and everything wrapping up. And it was, uh, it brings a lot of people into town. And, you know, great, good thing you mentioned that. Um, I was just talking with Joan here in the office and we were visiting about how Junk Fest has such a big ripple effect. You know, people um, all around the town benefit from that. Cows and Co. Creamery was open and crazy busy. And um, 
you know, we have a lot of ties to Fezzedin. My husband and I do. Our kids went to school there and we farmed near Fezzedin. And I visited with some people in Fezzedin and like Rose's Pizza, they were inundated on Saturday <laughs> uh, for supper. You know, people yeah. leaving the area stopped in there for pizza and, and salads and stuff. So, you know, that event has a huge <laughs> economic ripple effect for our whole area around here. It's really interesting when you really um, drill down and talk to people and find out uh, where they're headed and where they went and pretty interesting plus you know overnight motel or hotel stays too yep yeah that's right so a lot of people coming in so that's cool to see so yeah hats off to missy that's a huge undertaking yeah yeah <laughs> no missy kidding. Hafner, she does a great job with that yep yep All well right. good luck on friday night with the cardinals and the aggies we'll yep. be cheering on the cardinals Yep, homecoming football game, and hopefully less water than last Friday night. It was uh, oh, wet, wet feet. <laughs> that was awful. I felt yeah. so bad. It just kept raining and raining, yeah. and they still had the game. It was pretty sloppy, I bet. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of rain. But, yeah, it's uh, – yeah, so I'll uh, have homecoming football game right here on your live event. We'll have it tomorrow night. So, yep. All righty. Did you give us uh, contact info, Lori? Sure. 652-2524 is the phone number. You can stop by and visit us at 871 Main Street, right across from the bowling alley. And you can also send an email to chambergal at dactel.com. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Lori. We appreciate it. And enjoy the rest of your day. We'll check in again next week, Thursday. Thanks, Greg. You have a great weekend. Yeah, you too. See you later. Bye. And right now, we're glad to be joined by Michelle Sile. Michelle is the Carrington City Library Director. And... Uh, she uh, joins us once a month here in the Chatter Program to fill us in on all what's happening at the Carrington Library. So we appreciate it, Michelle. Thanks for joining us again. And, uh, well, we're moving right along here. We're uh, going to be switching that calendar to October. The first official day of fall is coming up. So it's, uh, you know, but temps and uh, so far September hasn't been too bad, right? Well, and I think uh, it's going to feel like fall, actually, on the first day, full day of fall, which is, well, I think, Saturday the 21st. So, yeah, it's gonna it's been pretty pretty wonderful, I think. We can appreciate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. All righty. Well, let's see. We got some uh, activities and some events uh, coming up for the Carrington Library we want to talk about. Uh, first up, next month, you're planning a cemetery walk again. So you don't have a date quite yet right now, right? Yes. So the idea of the cemetery walk is to um, invite people to come out to the cemetery. It's a good chance for people to visit the cemetery for a reason other than, you know, attending a funeral. But um, it, it, it's really about looking at the history of the Carrington area and some of the unique stories that are literally buried there. And so we'll have a script. We're going to do things um, all a little differently, which is why it's taking a little longer to schedule it, because we're going to have um, some people come out and portray the stories of the characters, you know, as far as, you know, they'll be telling their stories as those those people were. And so that will be kind of a, a nifty little element that we're going to add in this year. So um, we'll do it in an evening so people can come out. It lasts you know, 30 minutes or so, so it's not really long. And, but have to do it fairly early because we don't want it to be, you know, it's nice to have sunset time, but you don't want it to be dark because we don't want people falling over, you know, headstones or anything like that. So um, but it'll be a great opportunity for people to learn a little bit about the history of the Carrington area. We've got some interesting stories there. All right. Awesome. Um, and then uh, some of the activities for the kiddos. Uh, what's that? Uh, what's what all what's all coming up? Right. So during the school year, once a month, we're doing um an arts and crafts activity the first Thursday of the month. Everything's on Thursdays. The second Thursday is a STEM activity. The third Thursday, which it would be today, is a movie. Today, I guess people won't hear this before that, but um, we were doing uh, Kung Fu Panda 4. So, and then the fourth one is our robotics club. So anybody can participate in any of those. There's no cost associated with that. It's kind of right after school, lasts as long as the movie lasts or about an hour, you know, usually. So try to have something different. And each month we we post um, what the actual activity will be for, for those particular days. So people can, can take a look at that and know what we're planning to do. 
So that works out pretty good. And then, of course, October is coming up to Halloween. And so we're going to have um, some kind of a, a Halloween activity here. Um, as people are going out to do their trick-or-treating, they can stop by here and get a treat and you know, maybe do an activity and things like that. So we'll have a little bit of extra going on here at the library at that time, too. Yeah, talking Halloween already. Wow, next month. <laughs> I know, it's so yeah. fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. And then um, you have a story time for the kids and also adult reading class or uh, clubs too going on, right? We, we do. So story time, we're doing that every <clears throat> Wednesday morning and Thursday morning from starting at 10. And it lasts about half an hour. We do some stories, we do songs, and we do um, some kind of a craft. And so it engages the kids in a lot of different ways. And it's all kind of, you know, preschool readiness kind of things. Great opportunity for kids to interact with other kids. And everybody, again, is, is welcome to come in. Lasts about half an hour. And then we do the, the craft. So and then people, well, you know, a lot of times we'll stay and take advantage of the activities we have in our children's area, too. So and that's always, always open and always welcome. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks so much, Michelle. We appreciate it. And, and thanks the, for the date. And yeah, the teacher, the oh. adult reading clubs, I was going to mention oh. those. Oh, yeah, so yeah. The, yep, there we go. Yeah. So the adult reading clubs, we have two of those. And again, any adults are welcome to join us. Um, not everybody can come every week, but we select a book and then read it and then discuss it the next month. And we have one that meets Thursday evenings at 6 30 and one that meets Tuesday, uh, Thursday evening, the first Thursday, and then one that meets the second Tuesday in the morning at 930. And so once a month we meet, talk about those books, it's a great opportunity to interact with other people to talk about literature a little bit. And we've got some, you know, great experiences that we talk about that everybody brings to that. So it's always been really good, interesting discussions and uh, welcome to join that. Um, we because it's hosted by the library, we uh, do everything we can to provide the books. So people don't have to buy their own books for our reading clubs. So that's kind of a nice little thing too. So um, always welcoming new members. So anybody can come anytime they, you know, if they want more information, want to know what the books are, um, have them stop by the library. Okay, good deal. And uh, more information, everything. Of course, you got a, a Carrington Library Facebook page too, right? Where you can follow on and keep up to date. Right. We have the Facebook page, we have Instagram, and then we do post everything on our web page, which is carringtonlibrary.org. And then you can always, of course, stop by the library and find out what's going on. Okay, good deal. Well, thanks so much, Michelle. Anything else uh, to talk about here in this September update? Oh, that will do it. Okay, well, good deal. Well, thanks again so much. We appreciate it and uh, enjoy the rest of your day here and uh, enjoy the uh, last few days of summer, right? Yeah, that's right. I've been enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> thanks so much. <laughs> you bet. Thanks. Have a good day. You, you bet. Bye. Discover the charm of Carrington, where community and character come together. Our vibrant community is full of welcoming smiles and unique experiences, from delicious dining and one-of-a-kind shops to lively events and beautiful parks. Join us in celebrating the best of Carrington, where every visit feels like coming home. Come visit the Carrington Chamber and CVB office to learn more about our wonderful town and its amazing businesses. Explore Carrington today and experience the warmth of our community. Mercedes Lura joins us right now, and uh, she's the queen for the homecoming for Carrington High School. So congratulations on that. And that was just announced yesterday. Uh, yeah. King is Josh Bickett. So, um, well, let's see. Let's uh, get into the questions here right away. So how did it feel when you were announced as a homecoming queen candidate, first off? Um, it felt pretty good, especially with the girls and guys that are all also on like the court, I guess. It was just... It definitely felt good, I guess. How about your initial reaction when you found out that you won? <laughs> I was really excited, definitely. And I was just, I don't know, it was nice being up there. And obviously, King's the Josh, and or Josh is the King. And yeah, I don't know, it's just, it's really cool. Uh, share a memorable moment uh, from this homecoming week. 
Um, I guess one moment is just like dodgeball. Our seniors won the first round of dodgeball. And I mean, that's always something we play every year. And our grade always kind of prides ourselves on being that scrappy dodgeball team. So I guess that's always fun. Do you have any favorite traditions or aspects of homecoming that uh, stood out to you at all? Um, I mean, definitely just dressing up every single day for the different themes are, it's always fun. And then also on Friday after the football game, we go to that homecoming dance, which everyone kind of looks forward to. I definitely think that's the one that I really look forward to at the end of the week. One more question here. Uh, what message would you like to share with your peers and the school community? Um, just for like the peers, I just definitely say have fun during homecoming week and throughout the whole school year, I guess it just, it really makes a difference how like you take like, take it in, I guess, like if you're going to look at school and just kind of not really have fun with it, that's what you're going to get out of it. But if you just try to have fun, you'll, you'll really enjoy school. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much, Mercedes. And congrats again on winning the queen for homecoming week here at Carrington. Thank you. you bet. Have a good day. Bye. Josh Bickett joined us right now on Carrington Cardinals Community Chatter Program. And Josh was just crowned king for homecoming week for uh, Carrington Cardinals. So congrats on that, uh, along with Queen uh, Mercedes Laura. And uh, so, Josh, let's see. We'll get right into the questions here for you for homecoming week and everything. So how did it feel when you uh, were announced as a homecoming king candidate, first off? Well, being in Canada was honestly just an honor to be recognized by my senior class. So that was a really cool feeling. And then, yeah, to get voted for King throughout 9 through 12, was, it was a really cool feeling. What was your initial reaction when you found out that you won yesterday, that you were crowned King yesterday? I was a little surprised, but it was really fast and it was a cool moment. And yeah, my brother was crowned about 10 years ago on the date yesterday. So that was also a cool feeling. Uh, can you share a memorable moment from this homecoming week? <clears throat> um, well, I won best dressed on Tuesday for race versus Riches day. So that's kind of memorable. And then just being a nominee for coronation, that's, that'll definitely be a memorable moment. Do you have any favorite traditions or aspects of uh, homecoming that stand out to you? I'd say my favorite tradition is the dodgeball tournament we do every year. That's just a fun way that all students are engaged in it and cheer. And so that's just a really fun thing that we do here that I think is pretty special. Okay, one more question before we let you go, Josh. Um, give us, uh, like, what message would you share with your peers and, and the Carrington School community? I'd say just to be involved with everything and be excited with everything that you do. And that just the community really helps. And when they show support for us, that uh, it's just a really – nice thing that they do so yeah awesome well thanks so much josh and congrats again yeah. on the king for homecoming week here in carrington and enjoy the rest of your day thank you you too great yeah thanks